Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first ever Graders Virtual Ice Cream Social. You know, a lot of people in recent weeks have been doing virtual cocktail hours. We thought it would be great to do the same thing with ice cream. Why not get friends and family together, eat ice cream all over the country? So that is precisely what we are doing today with two great families. We have the Graders family making great ice cream for 150 years, and we have the Golick family making Notre Dame athletes and talk show hosts for about 40 years. <laughs> Let's uh, give the starting line up here. And now I don't know if everybody's boxes are aligned the same way mine are. So I, I can't say this person's in the, the left corner or whatever, but we'll just go by, uh, I guess by age, if I've got this right. We have Mike Sr. and Christine in one box. Say hello. 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 <laughs> We have Mike Jr. in another box. Hi. We have Jake and Jenny in a box. Hello. Hi. We have Sydney in a box. Hello. Hi, Sydney. Speaking of boxes, everybody here, except for Skip Grader, received boxes of Grader's ice cream. What was your reaction to getting the coveted Grader's box? Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damage is about to be done. Our reaction was we're going to eat it all way sooner than we should. <laughs> You've been going on it hard, Mike. I mean, the thing about these things is when you open them up, it's like, I don't know what a serving is per, but these yeah. are one serving as far as we're concerned. It's well, right. and that's the thing is like my favorite thing about graders has always been like the French pot style means that as soon as I pull it out of the freezer or out of the box, as soon as you don't have to wait for it to thaw, the spoon hits and immediately goes in, which means the clock starts for me. Like, <laughs> we're going up to the NFL draft and you hear so-and-so is on the clock. Like, Boldly Bearcat has been on the clock for about five minutes and is already almost gone. <laughs> that flavor, too, so. When Bearcat fans hear that you got your hands on Boldly Bearcat, they're going to be very jealous. It's a limited edition. They're hoping it comes back and comes back soon. But right now, there's just a little bit left in the freezer, and you got uh, your hands on a pint. We might have to start the lead for that, right? To, yeah, to get exactly it back. Right. Yeah, we might have to start the thing. All I right, feel so like we've got the right people on the call for that. Yes. Here's my question to all of you. You're from Connecticut, or at least that's where the kids were raised. How did you all become addicted to Grader's ice cream? Well, we were stopped to think about that today, and it was it's actually my sister and brother-in-law. Um, my brother-in-law grew up in Cincinnati, and they got married 15 years ago, and they had Grader's ice cream at their rehearsal dinner, mm. and it was the black raspberry, and from then on out. From we then on, it's just been, that, that's kind of like, the gift that gets passed around amongst the family, you just we, we send barrels of it to everybody and, and it gets eaten pretty quickly. So that, that was probably it. And it has been a staple in the Golick family ever since. <laughs> well, and I know for me and Jake and on the college side, for us, I had to give some credit. Kyle Rudolph, who is a Cincinnati, you know, a Cincinnati uh, guy through and through right there. Cincinnati elder grad who plays for the Vikings. He was me and Jake's roommate when we were all playing at Notre Dame. And between going back to visit his family and Cincy, and when they would come to visit, they would always bring two things, Skyline Chili and Grater's <laughs> Ice Cream. And so our freezer was stocked with it in college. Awesome. And that was, that was my first experience was with Kyle Rudolph as well. And then when I ended up playing my fifth year at the University of Cincinnati, I got to actually be in the fold of Grater's Ice Cream. So I was down <laughs> in the motherland. Uh, so I got to experience it firsthand down there. Jake, was that part of Tuberville's recruiting pitch? Come that to was. Cincinnati for your final year? <laughs> he didn't sure say anything ice cream? He said we have the best ice cream down here, so come on down, and that was it. <laughs> all right, Chip, so here's the question for you. We've got the Golics all over the country, Connecticut, Boston, Arizona. They're all enjoying their graters ice cream. How can people get graters shipped to them? Sure, we ship to them. Just go to www.graters.com. And you go to our company store, and uh, we'll ship it to you the next day. So uh, it's uh, really easy. And but but if you're you know we're in probably 46 states and many many grocery stores all over the country. So uh, 
Um, if you're you know, near a Kroger or a Kroger affiliate or Whole Foods, Fresh Market, um, we're, we're in lots of groceries as well. Mm -hmm. Can you pick your flavors? Absolutely, you can pick, well, I'd say you could hopefully someday pick boldly Bearcat. <laughs> but, uh, you can pick, yes, all 30 or so flavors we have most all the time. And then, you know, we have special flavors all the time. Right now we have a strawberry chip, which is a fantastic seasonal flavor. Um, so, yeah, we've got lots of, lots of good flavors that are, that are coming up. Uh, we've got orange and cream. That's a fantastic Ooh. flavor that's coming up here next um, in May. So it reminds you of the, you know, your cream sickle, but even better that you had when you were a child. So. Oh, those are the best. We, uh, we have black raspberry chocolate chip, yeah. black um, cherry chocolate chip. Black cherry is really good. Buckeye yeah. Blitz chocolate chip, which is Phenomenal, by mm -hmm. the way. Absolutely phenomenal. Cookie dough chocolate chip. I'm kind of a chocolate freak, so this is really getting me a lot. Yeah. Um, and actually, they're getting close to empty, too. So just thought I'd throw that out. FYI. Yeah. Yeah. So, We've got so Sydney showing off the entire lineup down in, uh, in the lower right corner on my screen. <laughs> oh, it? nice, Sid. Way to go. <laughs> Good. You know, my boyfriend walked out of another room yesterday when the first shipment came, and I was taking portrait mode photos of the Grater's ice cream, and he's never had it before. He's from southern Indiana. He's never had Grater's before, and so he tried the um, cookie dough one last night and proceeded to eat, like, half of it. <laughs> so we've converted another person. Had he gone through the whole pint, the relationship was over. You would have had it <laughs> Now I don't have to worry because we have like 23 more pints. So we're good. That is not bad. Just to let you guys know, um, we're improvising here on Facebook Live. I'm using my phone and a pint to hold it oh. up. So we can see you guys. All right. See, the, the pints are versatile. They can do more than just be eaten. It's incredible. So I have the following advice for the Golic children. I sent my mom graders on her birthday last year child of the year I'm one, I'm, one of, I'm one of five kids the other four quickly punted aside nice. and came up with the best gift mother's day is coming there you go yes, and, yes, and, and, and i am yes. honor i am eating the brown butter bourbon pecan which is her favorite flavor it's really good and, and i have said this many time on the air that they said oh you love all your kids the same no you don't i mean listen <laughs> You just flat out don't. You have favorites, and it changes every day. Like when Mike brought some of the stuff over here, he didn't bring that flavor that we all wanted boldly to try, Bearcat. the Boldly Bearcat. So Mike now is third on the rum. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, he's fourth. Jenny, my daughter-in-law, is ahead of him right now as well. So Mike is now fourth. So that whole thing about you love all your kids is saying that that's a bunch of bull. That that doesn't that works just like you did. You you give that gift. You do something. To ingratiate yourself to your absolutely family. who's number one on the list right now um i would say <laughs> nobody is one you're all tied for second right now because nobody's really stepped up mike mike is kind of out of the will at this point oh. <laughs> sydney at this point hasn't spent any of my money so she is i can't bang her too bad so i'd say jake and jenny you guys are the tops today <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Chip, anybody that lives in Cincinnati or has lived in Cincinnati has heard the rumor over the years that Oprah has Grater's ice cream shipped to her every month. Whoa, I, I don't want you to I don't want you to name names necessarily. You're shipping to the Golics. This is a famous family. Absolutely. Are there celebrity clientele getting regular shipments of Grater's? Yeah, yes, there is. So uh, TMZ reports that uh <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, we do have, a, um, actually, my wife, you know, she has worked many Christmas times, and, and there are a lot of uh, famous families that we all know that are, that are wonderful families that choose graders as gifts to send to people, which is, a, we're very thankful of and very appreciative of that. So, yeah, I mean, every, I mean, you know, from... McCaffrey. Yeah, well, they're talking sports. Christian McCaffrey, he can afford to buy a lot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We need more, more of those kinds of fans. <laughs> Boy, when, when, you, when you were first mentioned that, you said celebrities and said your wife. I said, my God, you're really sucking up now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm always looking for the opportunity. <laughs> you know, always. But, uh, yeah, Carol is our, our ship, main shipping coordinator, and she's, she always is like, you know, 
oh my gosh, she gets so excited when, when, when somebody calls and says, I need to order. And she's always blurting their names out. I, oh, I can't, you know. Yeah, Mike, Mike Krzyzewski Sh- loves our ice cream. He, oh, he gets it all out. Um, I, I don't know if he, he gets, but he, there's somebody that, that really likes him and gets, sends him ice cream all the time. There's a, um, a lot of famous, uh, you know, a lot Katie of famous Curry. folks. Katie Couric. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. So, what's, the, what's the biggest order that you sent out, do you know? Um, well, we do have some pretty large corporate orders that are always wonderful to have over the holidays where people – you know, like a lot of media companies will will, uh, will get it. Like I know, um, you know, Cross Media. I'm not sure of all their names, but but we we have a lot of big. Like we just had an order the other like um, a couple weeks ago for 350 uh, six pint oh. packs that that people that a company sent out to um, their clients. So. I think between all of those like that you just mentioned right there, and I know you guys can't make claims about what your ice cream can do, but you mentioned Christian McCaffrey, who is built like a Greek god, and Mike Krzyzewski, who hasn't aged in 40 years. So (laughs) if you eat Crater's ice cream, you will look like a bodybuilder and live forever. (laughs) Well, that bodes well for Dad at this point. Yeah, I just (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, we got to put the disclaimer up there, I guess. (laughs) Oh, no. no special effects were used in the eating of that ice cream. No. No. Uh, my grandfather lived to a, a very old 90, 90 some years old, and and uh, everything in moderation. But he always ate Grater's ice cream. Honestly, he he ate ice cream every day. So I, I think we have somebody in our family though that goes beyond moderation. It would actually be the two younger women, both Sydney and my daughter-in-law Jenny. Jenny goes way, way beyond moderation at times, and she smiles all the way through it, don't you, Jenny? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brain and the stomach don't really match up there, but, uh, you know, once you get that soft scoop, I always say when you can flip it in the pint, that's why I did game that. over. I did that last night. Yeah, it's right. game over. You flip it in the pint, see you later. During the search for the, uh, the big cookie chunk, I flipped it last night in the middle uh-huh. of watching parts of the rack, I flipped it. <laughs> the search for the big cookie chunk sounds like a movie title. Star in that. When Graders comes to theaters. All right, I have a question for Jake. So I had the opportunity to broadcast your games the year you played for the Bearcats. You had a touchdown catch, the first touchdown catch of your career at UConn, not far from where everybody lives. Was everybody there? Refresh my memory. <laughs> yes, everybody was there. I had a lot of my former high school teammates there as well. Um, a lot of friends growing up were there, so it was the best place possible to have my first touchdown. It only took six years to get it, but, uh, <laughs> but it, was, it, was, it was very cool. It was a long time coming for that, uh, and it was great to have everybody in the stands for that one. Gunner Keel on the threat passing end, and, you know, when you were at Notre Dame, you had Eifert and Kyle Rudolph. It was hard to get passes thrown your way. Yeah, it was hard to get on the field at Notre Dame with those guys in the way, so yeah, so. <laughs> Um, no, it was it was a great time at Cincinnati. I had a great time with uh, Coach Tuberville down there. It was a, it was an awesome experience. It's something I'll never forget. So the draft is coming up tomorrow, and Mike Senior and Mike Junior talked to Joe Burrow yesterday on Golick and Wingo. What were your impressions of the imminent number one pick in this year's draft? I, I was somewhat stunned when he said he didn't think Cincinnati was going to take him. I that blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> my God, man, you're sick. Oh, Lord. Help <laughs> that must not have been on the radio because I listened and I don't recall hearing that. Yeah, no, dad, dad is sick and twisted in this one. I think we're finally starting to get to the point where everyone in the process is like, yeah, this is happening right now. And even for Joe, who's gone a long way throughout the pre-draft process to not be, you know, not be too presumptuous in a lot of this. People took him not bringing up Cincinnati as like, would he hold out or something? Like, no, he was doing the humble thing of not wanting to assume he's going to be the number one pick for them. But like, what a cool customer. Like this whole thing, we're all home quarantining right now. These kids leading up to the draft have all had to do these Zoom Skype conferences with coaches and haven't had pro days. And Joe Burrow sounds like he just rolled out of bed and is getting ready to play video games. Like, He is so calm amidst all this, which is understandable because that's the exact same way he was during the last season, which maybe was the greatest college football season we've ever seen a quarterback have. So it it seems right in line with who he's been as a player. I think one of the things going to the NFL is, is from the neck up, you have to be so on your game. 
and I think he's there. He he's, has the physical tools for it, but I think he'll, he'll process the game as fast as he needs. He's going to make rookie mistakes, no doubt about it, but he, he'll process it pretty quickly. And I think Cincinnati, Mike, you can, you can correct me if I'm wrong. This is like, this is kind of like a double first rounder for them because their first rounder last year, the tackle from Alabama, what Jonah Williams was out all year with the torn labrum. He's coming back this year. So you basically got your first, you know, your last two years of two rounders coming in at the same time. Yep, it's, it's huge for them. And just in general, like Zach Taylor comes over last year. And, and certainly this is not to, to bag on, you know, Marvin Lewis, who did so much for the Bengals franchise during his time there, and Andy Dalton, who was a part of some great seasons. But to see some change around there at the two most critical positions in your organization, in head coach and quarterback, and to start to spin this forward, I, I think is going to be such a lift around there. Cincinnati's such a great sports town. We've all been downtown between the baseball stadium and Paul Brown Stadium and seeing that whole area and the way that it lights up when there's sporting events going on there. So I think it's going to be cool to see. And God, I mean, in that division, if this Bengals team can start to move forward, everyone's going to be able to enjoy that for a while because everyone is so young and good in the AFC North. How does everybody feel about watching the draft tomorrow when we've had this dearth of no live sporting events? I mean, hell for us, I think with the WNBA draft this last Friday did better numbers than it had ever done before. It was on E1, and it was kind of our look at how this is going to go. So between that and how well it did, between the last dance and that basically being treated like a Super Bowl on Sunday for us, and now the draft, like I think even people who maybe traditionally aren't, you know, diehards like us who are going to watch every second of it, I think people are going to be excited to see how they pull this off, the, you know, waiting on bated breath to see how, which of the GMs in the NFL have their internet completely crashed during the broadcast. There's so much to pay attention to. It should be a ton of fun. I mean, there are going to be guys my age, coaches and or GMs, you look at their setups, it looks like they have these gaming rigs in front of them, something they have no clue, clue about. So I think the most important person is the IT guy for every team. And here's a hilarious story for Detroit and Matt Patricia, the head coach there, the IT IT guy is going to be in because of social distancing. He's going to be in Matt's driveway in a Winnebago. That's where he's stationed. I mean, to make sure all the IT stuff works. So there's part of me that that is really going to be interested in that part of it is do you have any hiccups? You know, is the is the one coach to when they had the, the, the mock draft a couple days ago actually had to yell for his kids. His kids we're all on video watching Disney Plus, and the bandwidth was slow right. on the Wi-Fi. He told them all to get off that so the Wi-Fi could go faster. I mean, this is what you're dealing with now. You cannot Netflix, Netflix and chill. No. If no. Not the- Tomorrow if you're in an NFL GM's house. <laughs> I think it's a matter of seeing what team – because there's going to be a hic- – I mean, it's just how technology goes. What team is going to have the first hiccup? And I hope for the Browns' sake, it's not the Browns, because that would be very Browns. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need any more Browns jokes, although I'm sure the people in Cincinnati would enjoy that. The they Browns. would they would like that, yeah. Yeah, I definitely laughed. Sydney, are you a Browns <laughs> fan? Is that your team? Um, no, I did work for the Browns. I was an intern for the Browns um, right after college for one season. And then I got a job with the Bears. Um, and my boyfriend plays for the Bears right now, so... Kind of have to be a Bears fan. Yes, you do. Yeah. So, the, the, no quite honestly, the, the, the best thing Cincinnati can do is as soon as Roger Goodell says Bengals are on the clock, turn the pick in. Don't waste time. Don't let there be any technical issues at all. Just have the pick ready to go and yep. be done with it. That's why I'm saying they they do a phone call, they send an email, they do a text, <laughs> and they send a carrier pigeon just to make sure that that thing gets in. Maybe they'll use a good old fax machine. Oh, yeah. fax machine. So it can, the paper can fall behind the machine like it always does. That'd be awesome. All right, so Chip, I know you get ice cream flavor suggestions. Do the Golics have any ideas? Is there any combination you would like to see the greater Ooh. ice cream company uh, add to the uh, lineup? Is there, is, is there pancakes and syrup? Wow. Well, there's not pancakes and syrup, but there is a maple cinnamon crunch that Ooh. is awfully close. And, uh, and it's, you know, we, we, uh, it came out about two years ago, that flavor, and we did a lot of testing around it and a lot of focus groups. And it's an awesome flavor. But 
it, it doesn't sell very well, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> it is fit. It's like, uh, I don't know, my, my kids eat me out of house a home of cinnamon toast crunch ice cream uh, uh, oh. cereal. Yeah. yeah. And that's a great cereal. It, it, it's, it just holds up to that very well. <laughs> What about anything, anything like banana pudding, like with chunks um, we, of well, wafers? So we, every summer, usually from about Mother's Day through August, we have what we call bonus flavors. And about every two to three weeks, we'll come out with a new flavor that you can only get in our stores and, and, and also online to have it shipped to you. But a couple of years ago, we had a, a, a banana pudding that was fantastic. But we do have a banana chocolate chip every, 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 every year. And that yes, you do. <laughs> and it's, uh, a great, great banana flavor with milk chocolate chips. So, okay, that so how good. about how about birthday cake with buttercream icing <laughs> and chunks of cake in it? That's what I was. What you should ask. So that's a great segue to. So this this happens to be our 150th birthday year, right. and so we're you know we were really excited for it. <laughs> 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 So we were, we had this. So you guys talked to Tim earlier, who's who's our incredible marketing guru genius. We had this 150 days of celebration, starting uh, the day after Easter, running through early September, and we had all kinds of fun fun things and celebrations and, and all. So who knows what's going to happen now? I bought all this stuff that has our 150th logo on it. I don't know what we're going to do with all that stuff. Either. <laughs> we do know. I do know. There's one thing. In the month of um, June, we have, or June or July, I forget, but we have a birthday cake coming out. That is oh. off. <laughs> it's so good. It is. Oh, uh, it's my new favorite. It's Amanda's player. new favorite. Oh, hey. Okay. That's fantastic. what I'm talking about. So it all, you know, my brother Bob, he's the one that, uh, he, he, he's amazing. He figures out these flavor profiles and um, gets them out of the park. So. That, oh, that's awesome. Well, you have our address. So. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're happy to celebrate your birthday with yes. you. And, yeah. and, and like, speaking of things that you like didn't know, like birthday cake, I had no idea. Amanda enlightened me before this call. I didn't know Grater's made donuts also. Oh, yeah. But like, I was oh, just yeah. what? Gold. She showed yeah. me before the call so, the bakery for Grater's. Oh. So, yeah, so this is uh, <laughs> it's interesting. So we've always been ice, ice cream since forever. And in the, in the late 50s, my previous generation, the, the, the third generation said, you know, look, sales are kind of iffy in these some, some day parts. What can we do? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we started making bakery in the late 50s. So we do put it, donuts, Danish, coffee cakes, birthday cakes, bread. We do it all. And, uh, and it, we don't make any money at it. In fact, it's a terrible part of our business. But it's, my, it's, one of my, it's one of my favorite parts of the business. And I love our donut products. So I did bring a, a few uh, selections today. We are, oh, this this oh. is probably one of the most decadent, incredible things available anywhere. It's called a cheese cram. And it's, called, it's got Philadelphia cream cheese and cinnamon in it. Oh. It's amazing. This is a... One of my favorite donuts is go-to sour cream dunker. It's a cake donut. Oh. It's awesome. And, and that's Amanda's favorite donut. I brought that for her. That's a glazed happiness. She loves, she loves anything with, with uh, sprinkles on it. So, <laughs> so, so, yeah, we do have a bakery, but it's, you know, it's only here in Cincinnati because we, um, we deliver it fresh every, day, every morning. So, hey, wow. I'm distracted by Amanda's shirt. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Smoking Joe Burrow. Smoking Have you seen Burrow. That? <laughs> yeah. Wait, that's that's what the name of the flavor has to be. Smoking Joe. <laughs> yes. Smoking Joe. Oh. Absolutely. Wow. Good. <laughs> Mind blown. Even the dog wow. reacted to that. <laughs> wow. Well, All right, now, I do want to mention we're having fun today talking about ice cream and the draft and the Golics. But we want to make sure that people watching this are aware of the fact that we have a special promo code. If you would like to do a virtual ice cream social, all you have to do is enter the promo code at graders.com of Golic10. And if you have ice cream shipped using the promo code Golic10, Graders will donate $10 from every shipment to the Kids in Need Foundation. Oh. And Mike Jr., maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, Kids in Need Foundation is a, a great charity organization that, you know, when life is normal, they look to underserved schools in areas where over 70% of that student population is on the lunch program or on the meal program at school, meaning they come and they get, you know, a lot of their food while they're at school. And they know that a lot of the knowledge gap in this country and the education gap tends to be because kids don't have the basics when it comes to supplies. And so normally they do a lot of backpack stuffing events where they'll get great sponsors to come in and help them donate these supplies that they then distribute to these kids in the county at schools that qualify. Well, right now there's obviously a lot of people learning at home and, and a lot of people that while they're learning at home don't have internet to be able to do these Zoom classes and things, don't be able to have the option to learn online. And so having the basics right now is more important maybe than ever as far as making sure that kids don't fall behind while we're all forced into a different learning environment. So Kids in Need's doing a great job. You know, in addition to the buses that are also helping bring food to a lot of places, they're using those same means to make sure that they can distribute, you know, pencils, notebooks, all the basics that go to learning that kids need now more than ever. So it's a great organization. And so that is where your money uh, can potentially go and help. It is greatly appreciated. I've done a bunch of stuff with them now and they are awesome. Awesome. So this promo code will be good through Sunday. Again, go to graders.com. And if you have ice cream shipped using that promo code, GOLIC10, then $10 from every shipment will go to the Kids in Need Foundation. So great idea. Thank you to the graders for doing that. Thank you to the GOLICs for suggesting a great organization. No, yeah. Thank you guys. Really appreciate thank it. You. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Be a part of it. Look at that. Is Hopefully, really cool. you raise lots of money. That'd be great. Hopefully, yes. And the best thing about that is people get to eat lots of great ice cream. Ice cream yeah. Yes. <laughs> For sure. Well, good luck so, with the draft. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it. It doesn't just end tomorrow either. The Bengals no. need to hit it out of the park Friday and Saturday as well. Hopefully they will. We look forward to listening to your coverage of the draft on Golick and Wingo. Mike Jr., I hope you uh, show up at a Bearcats game this year doing color commentary. I know you did the USF game in 2018. So hope to run into you in the Nippert Stadium press box again. And to Sydney and Jenny and Jake and Christine and Mike, Sr. and Junior and Chip and Amanda and Tim, who's watching somewhere, thank you so much. This was great. This was fun. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your ice cream. You oh, well. Well. Take care, you guys. Bye. We look forward to Bye. doing something like this again, and we hope that everybody enjoyed our first ever Greater, uh, Graders virtual ice cream social. So long, everybody.